back in Genesis, Jacob wrestled with God, literally. And I think it was a picture of Jacob as a person, but it was also Jacob became Israel, which are God's chosen. Um, So I think it's a bigger picture of what do we learn from Jacob? If he wrestled with God and God named him chosen, then what does that say about the rest of us? It's a welcome invitation to really ask those questions of God, to really seek to find who he is and to wrestle with him. Jacob did not do a lot of things right. And he wrestled with me for an entire day and night. And then I still named him Israel, which were my chosen. And through that, the kingdom is being built. What you're saying, Jacob wrestled with God. And it says in the text uh, that he states, I will not relent until you bless me. And I think about our pursuance of Jesus now on earth. And what does that represent? What does that look like? And I just think about how we're so easy to just acquiesce. But I think that's a picture of this chance for us to say, I will not relent. I will not let go until you give me the understanding, the revelation that comes only from you. There's no person that can teach me what I'm longing for. And I think that's what we're saying. We're not trying to elevate people. We're not trying to put forward teachers. But what we're saying is, Here is a conversation that can point to the greater hope, which Mm. is revelation that comes from God alone. That is exciting. That does induce a sense of hopefulness that this could even be possible. Uh, And it causes us to, to want to give all that we have to that end. I am humbled. Um, It is different and special. And I think from a place of just knowing what church hurt is or what working in ministry you see behind the curtain, and it's like, you know that people start really wanting you to know, but get off track. We just want you to like cut through all this crazy and get back to what it is, and that's knowing Jesus. And it changes everything for you. It is, how do we not get better, um, but it is, how am I going to live differently? Um, I want to choose very intentionally to go after in my pursuit of God. That is my intention. Um, Am I going to fail? Absolutely. Am I going to get off course? Absolutely. But it is the intention of life change that I think Kava delivers. Mm -hmm. And so how do we continue to point people to Jesus? I'm, I'm all in. I'm all in for that. Yeah. Part of the conversation about who Jesus is and part of our faith experience has been deeply affected by emphasizing the what that we are supposed to do, but not really paying attention to why we are doing it. I think a simple question that is important to me is, to what end Mm -hmm. are we doing this? To what end am I reading the scriptures? To what end am I practicing these rhythms? And I think that's what we're hoping for, to get to the why behind the what. In Acts 2, we see the Holy Spirit and his manifestation and this new church's birth talks about how these new followers of Jesus devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the breaking of bread and the fellowship. You know, I think about what we are doing in this small, meager offering is saying we want to devote ourselves to the apostles' teaching. The apostles' teaching is, I think, so much more beautiful and rich than we've been able to experience in our limited different circles or spheres of conversation, if we can get our minds to imagine that there is more to the conversation than even some very informed and very rich ways that we've experienced in the past, I think it's going to deepen our appreciation for God's church and what that means for our lives. And I think to people who may even be new to the conversation about faith or who Jesus is, that's a way more compelling idea that it's more than just a bunch of principles and rules that we need to follow, but maybe there's a richness and a beauty and a way to live that is taught to us through the scriptures, but embodied through a people. I think that's really exciting. 